Okay, I'm back with more VR shenanigans coded entirely in Python, aside from some GLSL used in the shaders, uh, with no game engine. I've got slightly more realistic gun mechanics, and now it's time to make this game multiplayer. If you haven't seen my other videos, my networking framework is built off of shared objects. Intuitively, this means that you can get pretty far by just creating network player and item objects. The naive solution is to create float fields for each of the position and rotation axes for the player. For normal games, this is one pose, but in my case it includes information about the head, body, and hands since it's VR and we'd like to be able to see the head, body, and hands of players in the game. For a game to be competitively interesting, the update rates need to be super fast and very efficient. My baseline I'm aiming for is 60Hz, meaning that everything the player does is sent, processed, and received 60 times per second. The game's frame rate is completely separate, and it's actually a fair bit higher for most VR headsets. To achieve this 60Hz rate though, the optimal solution is to encode the player's poses as efficiently as possible. Of course that means we're going to binary encodings. We lose some of the easy to use features from the framework, but the framework still has support for binary fields. So I've created a pose data field with the binary type. While in the future I may add better support for custom binary encoded fields, I have to create my own objects to represent these fields with encoding and decoding functions for now. For the player's pose, I encoded the player's world position as three 64-bit floats. All of the rotations are quaternions with axes truncated to 16-bit integers. The heads and hands are always near the player's body, so I've represented them also as 16-bit integers. Normally this would mean that the movement would be choppy due to a lack of precision, but I've implemented them as offsets from the main body with a maximum offset that can be represented by the 16 bits being 3 meters. Since the maximum distance is short, the precision is pretty good without taking much data. This leaves a single player pose as 74 bytes at 60 hertz with a data rate of 4 kilobytes per second. Now we can just dump the player pose into the networked object, decode it into NPC poses on the other end, and voila, networked player poses. Voila, networked player poses. It's no fun if we can't shoot each other though, so we need to get some items networked first. This is arguably the most complicated part. VR items need to have full physics, ideally without stutters, while being controllable locally for any players. You can't have players stealing items from each other's hands though, so some kind of item ownership system is necessary. I came up with a likely abnormal system for this in order to minimize server computations. Items are instantiated by the server, and ownership is strictly controlled by it. However, when a client owns an item, it is responsible for pose updates including physics calculations until the item enters a rest state. That means that if you throw an item, your client must calculate all the wall collisions and bounces that the other players will see. Once the client says it's stable, it will fully release the item so that nobody is responsible for its physics anymore. However, thrown items should be able to be caught by other players while the physics are still being computed by the thrower. This is why two flags are necessary for item ownership. The first one indicates which client is responsible for the pose updates, and the second one indicates whether the item can be taken by other players. An item being held by a hand or an inventory slot cannot be taken. Finally, we just need an item ID and a pose field similar to the player. This pose is much shorter though since it's only one position in rotation compared to the four needed for a player. Now we can throw stuff around in VR. There's actually a big optimization here though. Since the player's poses are already communicated, the pose of the items can be derived from the player poses as long as item grab interaction points are communicated. Just set interaction fields for the hands and inventory to the interaction points of applicable items, and the other clients can determine the item pose, whether it be by hand or inventory slot, from the player pose alone. Now we can reduce the item pose update rate when they're held by hand or by slot, so that the item netcode is pretty much negligible in terms of bandwidth. The only time when real-time pose updates are needed for items is when they're being thrown, and nothing's holding them. Of course, this all looks the same as before since this was just a networking optimization. Items were honestly the hardest part. Tracers only need to know their spawn locations since their movements are deterministic, each bullet is just a couple of bytes of data, add in damage, health fields, respawn events, and boom. Combat. 
Footsteps are a crucial component to first-person shooters, especially in VR. Network sound effects are possibly one of the easiest things to implement. Just create a net sound object, make it instantly delete itself so it becomes a message, indicate the sound, position, and volume, and hook onto the delete event to play the sound on other clients. I've added it as an alternative sound playing function, so it's equally as easy to play a new sound locally as it is to have it networked. Footstep volumes can definitely be tuned for a better game experience, but I'll have to leave that for later. Enjoy some definitely not grass step sounds. Finally, we can let the server keep track of things like the remaining round duration and kill counts, and we can throw it onto a scoreboard. But wait, scoreboards normally have usernames and avatars. So it's time for a little hack I learned while working on Yannock. I can take the Steamworks SDK, which is supposed to be used by Steam games to interact with Steam, and I can use it to get usernames and avatars. You need a Steam game ID to use the SDK, but my game, which I've called Gunslaw, isn't on Steam yet so it doesn't have an ID to use. I can't use Yannick's ID since not everyone owns it, but fortunately there's a hidden game that every Steam user has in their library called Space War. But look at all of these players playing a game that doesn't exist. I can just use that ID too to get the username and avatars. Isn't it beautiful? One of the reasons I'm making Gunslaw is because the developer of Pavlov decided to nerf my favorite weapon even after agreeing with me that it wasn't even a problem in the first place. So of course I had to add my favorite weapon of all, the FAMAS. It's fun because the iron sights are absolutely terrible, so realistically the only way to use it well is to hip fire it based on muscle memory. I've made an unnerfed version in my own weapon stats, because why not? With some added menus made in Pygame, and a map made in my level editor that was initially made for platformers, and minor networking details, I've got a functional deathmatch game mode. Come get me. Nope. <laughs> I can crouch. Hmm. I sure hope nothing bad is gonna happen when I go up these stairs. <laughs> oh shit! Where'd my ammo go? <laughs> yeah, I won. I'm the best. I'm the best at guns and coleslaw. I'll take that. I tail. hear your steps. They don't. Oh, I went to your feet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the trade. You can't get me. You can't get me. I'm too. Shut <laughs> the worst toss ever, bro. Kills you. Can you jump on trees? No, they don't have glider. Can't shoot me. Where's my gun? Here it is. Ow, ow, ow. Uh, grip at like 400%. Go! Oh, sh <laughs> All I hear from you, boy. Oh, I see you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh the Emmett thing? Just twice? What the hell? I'm just not gonna peek you. F you. How about that one? Uh, are you sure you can just not peek? <laughs> oh. ah. Where'd you go? Or me. Oh! Hello! <laughs> yeah, the trick I think is to just not use the stairs on it. <laughs> just shoot the person from the roof. <laughs> ah! Oh, I got the helmet dink. I suck at aiming, holy f***! Ow, it's not loaded, it's not loaded! <laughs> so, what's next with Gunslaw? The first step is to add Team Deathmatch, where I'll need to add teams, kill feeds, and name tags. But after that, I'll go into my personal favorite game mode, Search and Destroy. It's the main game mode of Counter-Strike, and the game mode I've played competitively for 5 years in Pavlov. There's a lot of mechanics that go into it, such as biphases, economies, and of course, the bomb. And as you would expect, it needs more than 5 weapons too, so I'll need to add some of those. Once all the basics are done, I plan to add some good old proximity chat. 
<laughs> too late. It's too late. In the long run, I'd like to add some more traditional shooter game modes and eventually building so I can add some game modes that I played on various Minecraft servers years ago, such as Turf War or Destroy the Monument. Destroy the Monument is normally a lobby of 20 plus players split into two teams that build defenses, fight, and try to invade each other's territory to destroy monuments in order to win the game. I feel like it would be an absolute blast in VR with mechanics designed specifically for VR. I intend for Gunslaw to be free to play similar to Pixcarts, that way the game hopefully shouldn't struggle with obtaining a player base. If you've got VR and Gunslaw sounds interesting, I've linked a new Discord I've created for it. While the first few playtests will primarily use players I know are skilled from Pavlov, I'll ease into using players from the Discord for playtests after the first few. As a bit of an update on Pixcarts, I've decided to migrate it to the same version of the networking framework that Gunslaw uses, so that the low-level issues can be addressed in one game and be used for both. This migration will take a bit of time, but there should be more playtests later this year. Overall, it should make Pixcarts much more stable of a game. If you'd like to support my work and the servers for my free-to-play multiplayer games while also getting access to source code for unreleased projects such as Gunslaw, check out my Patreon. I'm also less than 500 subscribers away from 100,000, so if you enjoy these types of projects, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Thanks for watching.